laid out for me the, the blueprint of the invasion. Remember this, and this is laid out to me by me in Libyan foreign minister. I'm not saying it's a reliable source, but I believe he, he presented all of the facts and evidence, and it's all there. Let me lay out some of the evidence to you in Libya. The uprising in Libya started on the 15th of February. 15th of February. By the 23rd, by the 23rd of February, eight days later, all of the Western embassies had withdrawn. Now imagine, when Western embassies are going to draw, there's a protocol. There's a diplomatic protocol that you have to follow. When you're going to withdraw from a country, you give a country notice. None of the nations did this. How is it that all of the Western nations pulled out on the same day together? It was by design. They didn't give any notice to the Libyans that they were leaving. All of the embassies withdrew their staff, closed down. Eight days after the uprising. On the 25th of February, we have four uh, British SAS soldiers and two MI6 agents captured in Benghazi. Captured in Benghazi. Two MI6 agents, four SAS soldiers. Doesn't that tell you something? What were the British doing sending their agents in there so early? By the 17th of March, a month later, they had resolution 1973 imposing a no-fly zone. It was by design. The Western governments used the political institutions to maneuver, to impose their will, to impose Western imperialism, Western colonialism. We are living in the American empire, but no one wants to call it an empire. They use subterfuge and hide the facts. America has over 800 military bases around the world. 800. That is an empire. America's in Japan, Korea, Germany. They're around the world. They built 35 bases in Africa recently. Yet no one talks about American imperialism. Libya was a sad case. you sustain that with the collapse about to happen? My friend, we are fucked. We're in a serious fucking crisis right about now. We look at Syria, they want to, even if they don't destroy Libya, the whole idea, they want to destroy Libya to get to Iran. They, people have different interests. The Israelis want to destroy Syria or even weaken Syria or keep Syria in a perpetual war because it weakens Hezbollah. Can't be any attacks. Their, their armed supply line. A weakened Syria isolates Iran for America. Once they control that region, where else is, do we have around the world? All the African governments are already fucked over and sold out. You Arabs by the Arab League, look at the Arab League. Who do we have? Which, where, what happened to the days of Abdel Nasser of Egypt? What happened to the days of Omar Mokhtar of Libya? What happened to the days of the great revolutionaries of Africa and Asia? What happened to them? What happened to Thomas Sankara, Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah? Where are those, that caliber of leaders? We're fucked. We don't even have the great intellectuals of, the, of yesteryear. We don't have the Jean-Paul Sartres and all these characters. They're gone. There are no intellectuals, they're all bought out. Capitalism has bought everything. Hip hop. We used to have hip hop artists talking about the, the, the problems of poverty, corruption in government, survival. Now look at these hip hop artists. They're talking about, we have Puff Daddy, Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z, all of them motherfuckers. Foot soldiers of capitalism. Foot soldiers of capitalism talking about, look how big my diamond ring is. Look at my, 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 my gold chain, my teeth cost $150,000. Look at little Kim, that, that's, that's little Wayne. Little Kim who goes to the pedicurist and she cuts out $100 bills and glues them on her nails. $100 bills! It cost her about £2,000 just, just to get her nails done. The obscenity of capitalism has corrupted everything. So these hip-hop artists, and look at the message of these hip-hop artists. These hip-hop artists, they sell death. These hip-hop artists talk about, I just shot a nigga, killed a nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. Nigga killed a nigga, shot a nigga. <laughs> Blew us this nigga's head. You women, bitches and hoes. Yo, bitch, ho, bitch, ho. I wanna fuck you and your mama too. <laughs> fuck you, ho, bitch. <laughs> nigga, 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 ho. And these artists, Jay-Z, they will sign Jay-Z to sing at Glastonbury. They will bring Jay-Z to Hyde Park. They will celebrate him as an international star. 
Only black artists who sell that negative message could do that. They would never, no mainstream corporate record company would ever allow a white artist to do that. Not even Eminem. Eminem can say, I hate my mother, I'm going to kill the bitch. But he's talking about his mother, not white women. You won't find no, no white artist saying, I just killed a honky. I killed a honky in a drive-by. I shot the honky nine times. Hey, you white women, you're bitches and hoes. Hey, bitch, I wanna fuck you, and I wanna fuck your mama too. It couldn't happen. There is no white mainstream corporate record company that would ever promote that message to white mainstream society. But you, they would allow these black artists to say nigga, 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 bitch and hoe, and I got rich selling crack cocaine. And I'll do. what do you think happens when you see young black youths growing up? without any representation in the mainstream media, without no role models, no icons that they can look to apart from sport, music, uh, sport and music. Of course, there's a choice. I can either become a 100 meter sprinter like Usain Bolt or a crack dealer and use my crack money to become a singer. So we have Jay-Z, 50 Cent and all of these other artists saying, keeping it real. And they diss each other saying, you're not a real nigga. You're not a real nigga. You never, you, you, you never did no drive-by. <laughs> you ain't no real nigga. You're a fake nigga. Nonsense! So now you have middle class black children whose parents are doctors and academics want to go out and sell drugs and shoot up the place to be a real nigga. I'm a real nigga. Yes, my father's a doctor, but... Think about it. We don't challenge these things. You stereotype entire communities. So when you watch cops,